We're standing on the southeastern end of Dropping Zone N, next to Ronville Village. Just here was the 13th Parachute Battalion Rendezvous. Over the slope was the 12th and 7th Parachute Battalion Rendezvous. At 10 to 1, this is where the main drop happened for those battalions. The place was quite covered in Rommel's asparagus, the poles that were meant to prevent the glider landings here. Some men had been allocated to get those poles out of the ground to create lanes for the gliders to land in. The 22nd Independent Parachute Company, Pathfinders, some of them had set up one Eureka at the end of this track where it crosses another track and some others down in that corner. Unfortunately, they were meant to be on DZK and they started sending out signals for K. So that caused some confusion and you had men of the 8th Parachute Battalion also landing on this dropping zone. At 20 past three in the morning, the gliders began landing in this area. All around here, the 80 gliders of that period started landing. Most of us were successful in landing. Others, some others crashed into the walls that surround some of the fields and some of the poles also that they just didn't have time to remove. But overall, the glide landing in the early hours was quite a success. They brought with them some of the anti-tank guns which were vital in preventing the German armour which was going to come up obviously from the south. The drops here were far more successful than that of DZV of the 9th Battalion and the Canadians. Even so the men were still scattered about here, mixed up in the dark trying to find their rendezvous. Orientation wise, we're looking at Breville, Le Mont is just there. Where the water tower is, is the Bois de Mont, where the 9th Parachute Battalion ended up two days later, and beyond it, the Chateau Saint Com. All of this, you see, is the Breville Ridge as it runs down to Troarn. In that direction is the Lemenal Crossroads where Brigade HQ was. In between the 9th Battalion there and Lemenal Crossroads, you can see there's a dip. In the, in the ridge, all that area was wooded. In between the area of the 9th Parachute Battalion and the Bois de Mont was no man's land in effect. Constant German patrols coming in to that area causing problems and of course that road was vital because the supplies would come up from Romville on the road behind us to Brigade Headquarters and then be taken up to the 9th Parachute Battalion. So their supplies were very precarious particularly on the 12th of June with the heavy action and they were running out of ammunition. This is the Lamenal Crossroads on the Breville Ridge. It was a vital artery because it, it was a crossroads of two main roads, one from Troarn down to Pegasus Bridge in effect at Benneville and from north to south from Varaville down to Romville. Third Parachute Brigade comprised of the 8th, 9th and 1st Canadian Parachute Battalions. The 9th and 1st Canadian were landing in a drop zone just to the north near Varaville, the 8th Battalion to the south on drop zone K. It was their job to help engineers blow up some bridges further to the south and then take up a defensive position further along this road in the Bois de Bavon. This position was one of the objectives of the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion on D-Day. Although they had a scattered drop, elements began to arrive here about 8 o'clock in the morning and set up defensive positions. Because of its standing on the Breville Ridge, it was known to the men as a place to come if they were dropped wide or in trouble, didn't know where they were, get to the Menal Crossroads and then they could be reassigned to their battalion. So there, during the morning, a lot of stragglers came into this area. Major Dyer, Officer Commanding C Company of the 9th Battalion, arrived here later in the morning with quite a few stragglers, and they were directed to take up position along where this fence was. There was a hedge there back then. Um, 
in effect, the Germans were about 200 yards away in a farm. They stayed there for a couple of days. The Canadians had taken the crossroads and stragglers began to arrive. Some of the first ones were 9th Battalion men who had missed the action at the Merville battery. A small group were placed in a ditch alongside this road. They were there for a while. When they heard the sound of a truck coming towards them, obviously they couldn't see it because of that curve in the road. However, when it came round the bend, they could see that there were six Germans sitting in the back of the truck. They let it get to within 50 yards before opening fire. One or two of the Germans got out and tried to run away. Others got in the ditch. When the action was finished, the men crawled up the ditch to check on them. And one of the Germans got up with a Beretta pistol, tried to open fire, but was killed. Later again in the day, Major Dyer of C Company, 9th Battalion, arrived here with more stragglers, and they were then set up in a hedge along the line of this field beyond the road. This is the field where Major Dyer's men were positioned behind the hedge there. And during one of the actions, Len Daniels, a member of the 9th, was looking through the hedge and they were being mortared. There was a pest, a real pesty mortar being fired. Very, very accurate. But he began to realise what they were doing. They were doing it on a very regular basis. One, two, three, four, five, plop, and they'd fire the mortar. And he watched this man, and each time which five he could see a head pop up. So what he did, he counted out one, two, three, four, then fired, and the man stepped up into the shot, and that ended the mortaring. Over the next few days, more and more members of the brigade who had been drop wide came here and was put into the defensive position. The 9th Battalion men were still over there. A few others arrived, were just in ditches on the road there towards the Chateau saint Com. On the other side of the road here were engineers of 3rd Parachute Squadron. At Varaville on D-Day, there had been a regimental aid post set up. And still, two days later, the medics were driving up there and bringing them back because they'd set up a main dressing station in Brigade Headquarters. During the morning of the 8th of June, there was an attack, quite a heavy attack by the Germans, down this road. With difficulty, it was repulsed. And the engineers, to ensure that the Germans didn't get down the road, hurriedly put a couple of mines across the road here. They didn't know these wounded men were still at Varaville. And so just after that action, a medical jeep came roaring up the road and straight over a mine. One of those men was Doug Tottle. I mean, the whole jeep exploded, went up in the air. All the old trees on that side of the road were on fire. There was a tire in the tree. Tottle was on fire. He managed to jump out, roll round and put himself out and roll into the ditch. Everybody thought he was dead. But a little while later, he was found, recovered, taken to the dressing station and evacuated to England. And miraculously, he did survive.